Hi kids, Coach Robert here again. We're going to be continuing our series on where to move your pieces. Where's the best place to put your pieces in the game? Just like every other sport, your pieces have places where they work the best. And if they're not where you expect them to be, it just doesn't turn out as well, right? So, you know, if you're playing something like baseball, you want your first baseman covering first base. When there's a ground ball to shortstop or third, you don't want your first baseman running out to right field or running after the ball. You want him moving to the first base. Just like that in chess, you have your pieces where they work the best. And so you want to make sure you move those pieces to that place where they work the best. We looked at the knight and said the knight is best on this center 16. And we know it's the best because that's where he has the most moves. He has eight moves in that center 16. If you move him to the edge, he only has four. If you move him to the corner, he only has two. It's not very strong. The bishop, we said, works the absolute best in the very center of the board. It has 13 moves it can make. On the next ring out, it has 11. And on the next ring, it has nine. And then on the most outermost ring, it only has seven. And so the bishop likes to be close to the center as well. The knight can jump into the center on its first move. The bishop can't get all the way to the center, but it can get into that second ring around in just its first move. And so that generally tells you what sort of move you want to make with those two pieces. This video, we're going to look at the rook. Now, the rook starts off in the corner. Just like the others, the first thing we want to do is count out where on the board does the rook have the most moves. Okay. Well, remember, rooks can move up, down, left, and right. So let's count all the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, that's a lot. That's more than the bishop had, even in the center. Well, the bishop got more as it got close to the center. The rook, the knight got more as it got close to the center. Let's see what happens if we put the rook here in the center. How many moves does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's the same as it had over in the corner. Huh, let's try it just at the edge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Huh. Okay, so the rook has the same number of moves, controls the same number of squares, no matter where it is on the board. Okay, well then we have to think about some other things. If the rook is just as good at, on the edge as it is in the center, then maybe we should be thinking about where's the rook the safest? Well, the other pieces are strongest in the center, so maybe the rook is safest on the edge. Generally, in the end game, when most of the pieces are off the board and it's just the rook and the kings, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to attack your opponent's king from the edge of the board. So if I've got a couple of kings on the board, then I'm going to try to keep my rook way off over on the edge so that king can't takes a really long time to get to it. Right? If the king gets too close, then I'm going to just take my rook all the way to the other side to make it hard for that king to catch me again. If he tries to catch me again, then he can't. And the rook is able to force the king away again. And the rook just stays way off to the edge and attacks from a distance. All right, that's the best way for a rook to work in the end game. Okay, well, let's say we're not quite to the end game, but maybe we're a little ways in. So let's set up a couple of rooks. All right. We're just going to put them here for now. We're going to put a king on the board with a couple of pawns, maybe a rook here, because that's kind of the way it looks when things get castled. Well, the best place for a rook in the middle game is on the seventh rank. Ranks are your rows, and so you want your rook on the seventh rank 
compared to where it started. Now the reason for this is that means it cuts off your opponent's king. Your king can't really get out. You see, now the king's is stuck. And so if it's maybe uh, moves a pawn or something like this, maybe this rook comes way down here. Yeah, the computer already sees, hey, you should do that. That's good. And then maybe the king uh, moves over something. You can capture this pawn. And now this king is stuck. All right. The king can't go anywhere. So maybe he moves here. Now we got check. The king has to move back. And we have checkmate. Okay, so you see the rooks do really well on the seventh rank. And the reason they do is they cut off the king. They cut off the king and they attack any pawns that haven't moved. And so if you can get your rook to your seventh rank or your opponent's second rank, that's where they do the best. So early on in the game though, your rook is stuck way over here in the corner. And it's got pawns in front of it. It's got knights to the side of it. It is completely trapped, right? So generally, what happens in a game is, actually let me just go ahead and reset the board. What happens in the game is the first moves are typically pawn moves, right? And then we might bring out some knights, move into the center 16 just like we want, and the bishops. And then we might do something special called castling, where the king moves over two and the rook goes to the other side. Now the rook still can't do much because it's behind pawns, right? The idea is where you want your rook, let me go ahead and clear the board again. And I'm just gonna put the pawns here now. The goal is, is notice those pawns in the center move first. What you wanna do is you want you to get your rooks here, where they're not behind blockading pawns. If you can get your rooks towards the center, they can help support those pawns that have already moved forward. And if the pawns ever disappear off the board, your rook is already attacking the other side. Maybe even the queen or the king that's sitting over there. So rooks do best when they're on what are called open files. An open file is where there are no pieces blocking it from going all the way across the board. A semi-open file is one where you don't have any of your pieces blocking it, but your opponent does. And so something like this would be like a semi-open file where you don't block your rook, but your opponent does. But that just means your rook may have a chance to come and capture this piece at some point. And so let's kind of review again. Your rooks can play anywhere on the board, but in the end game, they like to be on the edge. During the middle game, they like to be on the seventh rank. And during early parts of the game, they like to be on open files where they don't have any pawns blocking them. That way they can attack your opponent fastest. So that's the rook. Try to make sure you're using your rook really well in your game because it's such a strong piece. It always can move to more places than just the bishop. And so it's a really powerful piece once you get to learn how to use it. Okay, next time we're gonna start looking at the queen. So I will see you then.